You are merciful to all, O Lord, and despite nothing that you have made, despise nothing that you have made, you overlook people's sins to bring them to repentance, and you spare them, for you are the Lord our God. You're very welcome to Mass today in the beginning of Lent, um, Ash Wednesday, and as you know it goes on for 40 days in preparation for Easter. I was going to have music today, but I realized that um, if you have the music on the smartphone and you try to upload it onto the internet, they won't allow you to do that if you're working for YouTube. So they'll block the, the unless you have copyright. So anyway, 40 days in preparation for Easter. And we know that the the figure 40 is very significant in the, in the Bible because Jesus spent 40 days in the desert and that's primarily why we have these 40 days of Lent. But also, the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness, if you remember, on their way to the Promised Land. And we're reminded of that today as well, that um, we haven't here a lasting city and we see one that is to come. We're getting ready for the eternal kingdom, the promised land of heaven, shall we say. And then, if you remember, uh, in the book of Genesis, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, and there was a great flood over the earth, and Noah was saved. And Elijah um, walked or travelled for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and he was making for Horeb, the mountain of God. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with the weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart. Fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, Order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, Where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offences truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervour, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, At the favourable time I have listened to you, on the day of salvation I came to your help. Well, now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your alms giving must be secret and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place. And your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they're fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had a reward. When you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that no one will know you're fasting, except your Father, who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. We notice these days, the days are getting a bit longer, and... That means that Lenten days, and I think Lent comes from the word length. Lenten days are days which lengthen. And an old Hebrew word for um, Lent, I think we, they call it Tashiba, which means to turn. So as the earth is turning more towards the sun, uh, getting, and the earth is getting warmer, at least I think it is, um, and in that sense, um, turning towards the light, basically. And I think that's what Lent is all about. Jesus is the light of the world. You're going to turn more towards him. And in that sense, also, we'll say the farmer is turning the soil, preparing to, for the growth. Um, so it is really about turning. And then in a few moments' time, actually, we replace the word turn away from your sins. Now they're using the word repent, which means the same thing. So turn away from your sins and be faithful to the gospel. That's very much part and parcel of what Lent is about. 
if there's a besetting sin in your life and you're doing nothing about it, then you need to do something about it, I think. Um, because in the second reading there, it did say, do not neglect the grace of God. And this is a chance, these 40 days. And as the reading says, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. So not to be putting it on the back burner, oh, I'll, I'll deal with that later because the road to hell is paved with good intentions, as you know. So, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. Perhaps you haven't been to confession for years, a, a private confession, I mean, not this generic stuff. If you go there, one-to-one -one with the priest, open your heart, maybe there's something bothering you in the past, whatever, just get rid of it, because that's the way to come closer to God, basically. And we heard that in the psalm today. You know that beautiful psalm we heard? That was the psalm of David uh, when he sinned with um, Uriah's wife. Do you remember that? Um, and he was really, really sorry for what he had done. And these are his words. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. Wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. We also said, of course, that the ashes reminds us of our mortality. I, I seem to be doing an awful lot of funerals these days, and a lot of them are at the crematorium, so I'm really reminded of it. I've got five funerals on the trot, and there's one tomorrow over in Hutley, not Hutley Wood, but um, Grenside. But we are reminded uh, every time we do a funeral that that's our destiny. Uh, and the ashes will remind you of that so that you don't want to be concentrating too much on this world and all its pleasures um, but keep your eye on the world to come which is the one that uh, never ends you're a short time living but you're a long time dead and also the ashes also would, uh, is a sign of your repentance. So when we sprinkle it or put a little pinch on your head, uh, you remind, that is your sign that you are going to repent of anything which is not right in your life. And I have to repent. We all have to repent. The Pope has to repent. The Pope goes to confession. You know that. He does. We're all in the same boat when it comes to repentance. And we all really need the mercy of God. So, another thing about the ashes, leave the past in ashes when you confess. Don't be dragged down by your past. The Lord, once he forgives us, he dumps our sins in the deepest lake, somebody said. And he puts a big sign up over it which says, no fishing, no going back. And that's part and parcel of what God's mercy is all about. But when God forgives, he completely forgets. He's suffering from total amnesia because he loves each of us. And Lent may be a penitential time. It may be a time of, um, you know, asceticism. But it's also full of joy. Because why? There's joy in heaven when a sinner repents, turns back to God. And we have several stories in the gospel about that happening. Even the good thief on the cross he turned to the Lord in the nick of time and he said, remember me in your kingdom. I know I lived a horrible life. And Jesus said, oh, today you'll be with me in paradise. That's the mercy of God. We now bless the ashes. O oh God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust 
may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life. After the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Repent and believe in the Gospel. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash me my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield fruit in due season.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you, and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. And the hearing confessions after this Mass, down at the back, in the room at the back, the hall, basically. The Lord be with you. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O Lord, on those who bow before you. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.